So Blizzard has been hiding from us some recent changes that they did to the game and we'll go over them today because I found their their post which they don't necessarily update as they said they would at, at least to make it public to everyone. It, it's, it's something that I think they should have made widely accessible even within the game as a mailbox um, you know, you know, you know, they just send a mail and, and talk about the bug fixes and also the changes they do to the game every single time they do them. That would have been a nice way to connect with the players a little bit because for now, it seems they only do that once a month with a patch and we don't even know what the next patch is coming. We know the new boss is coming, but we don't know if anything else is coming to the game. I would love to see more, right? Um, anyway, <laughs> let's get going with the changes that they did. They do have a blog post right here all right this diablo immortal bug fixes and patch notes for all platforms blog post says july 19 on the top there but that's not the truth because they did just update it uh, one day ago and there's also a battle net uh, notification here for tomorrow there's gonna be a 30 minute maintenance and i wonder if there's gonna be more changes to the game um let me just reload it and see if this is gonna show up it, it, it showed up every day. I'm not I'm not sure, I'm sure why it's not showing up. Anyway, this this um, recent changes happen through a hotfix. So the server doesn't go down for the changes to happen. They said that they would have this post there and update it whenever they do these changes. But here on the top, they didn't update it. Let's go over the changes, though. One of them is really significant because I think they shouldn't have done it, right? Gameplay, they fixed an issue with XP and the battle pass rank. They said they will give that XP back to the player. So I, I hope they find a way and that's cool and all. But look at this, look at this. In Elder Rifts and Challenge Rifts, using Revive at checkpoint more than three times will increase its cooldown or cause a time penalty for the, the first one's for party, this, the second one is for solo. So I don't even know why they did this. Cause we, like me personally, I love doing Challenge Rifts. Uh, when I get a small CR boost, I go in there and try and do them. It's a nice fun challenge. You know what to do. You, um, you, you know, you make your, um, your strategy with beating the elites and everything and one of the strategies was to actually get the the first elite at the start to leave it alone go beat the rest of the the cr die and then go back to the start of the challenger and then when you die there you would revive a checkpoint and use that as a way to um to clear the rift faster since you didn't have the time penalty i think the time penalty definitely sucks because we don't have a way to to counter the high um, damage that the enemies are doing they're doing insane amounts of damage there's no like strategy other than you know dodging which you cannot do at all times and and trying to do damage and if you cannot dodge and heal because oftentimes you get two shotted um you know you won't be able to push and pushing the challenges is part of the game anyway what they do is they they will include this penalty i think you can still do the strategy is that you'll have three times basically as a free revive through the checkpoint so you still we were still going to do the same strategy and utilize maybe a mix of revive uh, at your body and a mix of revive at the checkpoint and see if you can actually do that to um to beat down the boss but you know already the clear times of the challenges are are quite high anyway let's have a look at the other changes that they did they did one very good change which is for the right of exile which i was very excited about uh, we'll go over that in one second. So fix several issues with the hero's journey that prevented players from completing tasks. That was with the nightmare and uh, whatever it's called. The um, I think the, the achievements that you would complete through the hero's journey. Completing the haunted carriage, ancient nightmare or demon gates. This was the issue right here. So they fixed that so that all of them can give now uh, proper completion points. And then they have the events. Fixed an issue that prevented players from completing... Uh, the Aaron 40 battle points and there's another one with the hungering moon but look at that the cycle of strife issue um the immortal leader's character is deleted and your leader will automatically be selected based on ranking that is cool but this was the biggest thing that that was an issue right equipping the untouchable mountebank set will no longer grant set bonuses to the immortal during shadow war and challenge of the immortal so this is not recent. This is not July 26. This has been fixed for at least, I want to say, 10 days now since the Shadow Wars I was doing. I was made aware of this set doing this thing 
sometime after I did my uh, Ride of Excel where we lost the Immortal title, where we couldn't defend. I didn't know I, you could do that. Uh, but even so, that was like a stupid thing. I don't think gear should play a role or anything should play a role into how the Immortal has power. It should all be depending on your ranking as an Immortal or when you are Shadow and you're doing the Shadow War, it should all depend on your rank as a Shadow and the participation of your clan in beating the uh, the main battle and the support battles, right? Where, where the support battles give you bonuses on the main battle. I think that that should be, be the only way to affect the Immortal. Now there's some speculation about resonance and gear affecting it, which is honestly not a, a good thing to have because it creates a huge imbalance in terms of how an Immortal or the Shadow War goes and it really just widens the gap between Zwales and, and free to plays, right? Um, fixed an issue that prevented players from earning golden hilts during Raid the Vault. Yep, that was a big issue. The Ride of Exile adjusted the portal location for defenders in stage two to match its current location in Battlegrounds. Yeah, that was, that was actually way back uh, than usual. Fixed an issue that will cause the Immortal to be affected by crowd control. That is good. Fixed an issue that prevented players from signing up for Ride of Exile. That is so, so bad, by the way. There's still many, many issues that I think they should be uh, addressing, and I hope they, they fix them quite soon. And there's also uh, some UI fixes with the red dot indicator. Uh, fixed an issue that will cause items left behind in dungeons to be duplicated when mailed to players. Oh, man, I wish that happened to me. <laughs> du duplicated items, that would have been cool. Updated Warband permissions to allow all, all members to recruit other players. That is cool. Fixed a bug with the Typhlo Robe Monk. And yeah, here's the July 19 bug fixes. But these two bug fixes, they, they should have made these known uh, much quicker. I, I mean, an in-game mail would have been the easiest thing in the world for them to do. I hope they do more fixes. I hope they do more changes. I hope they bring in more patches and more communication. That's what I feel like Blizzard is lacking at the moment. For a mobile game that's making them literally multiple million of dollars per day so think about that think about that and they're not even bothering to communicate it with us it, it, it's it feels like something is missing they need to hire somebody some pr dude to 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 send to send the the communication from the company to the players it makes absolute sense to have that anyway guys this was the video hope you subscribed to the channel so far let's get to 5k for this channel thank you and i'll see you in the next one see ya